sometimes they can be absolutely the most motivated most interesting and fascinating people to listen to and sometimes they can be the most corrupt. The simple reason for that is they're dealing with their own ego. In other videos I'll be talking about how ego really works but in this case uh, the basic understanding of ego will be applied to those who are more interested in their self than they are of other people. To feel self-worth, they often make the mistake of being actors and having things and money to look like that they're somebody as opposed to having real understanding what their purpose really is in this world. And that is to motivate people into a direction that is that benefits everyone. And this is the tricky part about this aura because they have amazing leadership ability they can also be extremely destructive with it. And that's why this aura is so difficult to raise as a child, because they're dealing with an ego that they think they're better than everyone else. But at the same time, they have an enormous amount of self-hate and lack confidence of what they can really do. So they hide that with this ego, this front. However, having said that, they are intelligent, and don't get me wrong, and they're extremely passionate. Uh, this aura has a tendency to have problems with issues like lust and stuff more than others. Not that others don't have that, it's just that they often get caught into the game of trying to be holier than thou while practicing some very, very lusty and down-to-earth things. However, when this aura does get balanced and understand their inner workings and, and don't judge themselves or others for their faults and mistakes and just motivate to do their purpose in life, they can be an amazing and an enjoyable aura to be around. That's why I call them the hit or miss aura. Now, if you have a child like this, the key thing you can do is to make sure that they are balanced between play, love, discipline, at the same time being very aware of what their ego is. Selfish behavior is not acceptable. Arrogance, abuse of power, and so on can be taught at an early age to guide this aura into something very powerful and very meaningful. However, in today's society, I'm seeing more and more of this aura getting into power and simply abusing it. They love their self-gratification. They love the attention, and they love the games that they're played with having power and therefore the most likely to abuse it. It is up to us to recognize those who can have ego and wield it well. Some can, most don't. Having said that, let's get into the details. SR tends to be a little bit lazy, so they're not so into making things happen with their own physical power. Therefore, they like to order others to get things done. Sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's a very bad thing. Because violets are so creative and intelligent, and they're the visionary of the auras, they can make things happen if people follow them. The mistake is, is that they can easily become cult leaders or bad politicians. If they become good ones that really do benefit everyone as a whole and benefit themselves, then this aura really does shine. This aura tends to be extremely intelligent. Uh, they are lazy a lot of the time when they study, but if they find something interesting, they will study it to the bone. And they are very good at research and finding uh, out things that most people would skip over. They also become very passionate in, in when they get involved into their liaison d'etre, or the reason for their being in this world, their purpose in life. And because they have such a wide vision of things, they can see how to take a group of people and create something quite meaningful and powerful for everyone. Because they like the mental stimulation, they like to theorize, they like to make uh, considerations and everything about the universe and so on and so forth, and come up with new and creative ways of making things happen. Though at times they can seem to be very aloof and cool and confident, they are really not. Inside, they are very, very, very emotional, very concerned on how others view them. In intimate relationships, they also very 
aware of other how other people think and feel. And this is critical uh, if they develop this properly, they become great leaders. If they don't, they can be very manipulative. Again, this aura tends to be very possessive and jealous of others, especially of of people that they're involved with. They won't allow others to get involved with their own so they can come up to be very rigid and demanding at times. However, if they do find a uh, good balance, somebody that can fit their psyche and live within their ego, they can create quite a wonderful relationship, a very passionate and warm one. If not, they tend to be antisocial and become loners. This is not a sociable aura. Small talk and stuff like that do not appeal to this particular type. Most of the other auras in the spectrum of auras uh, will find this a difficult aura to be around for long periods of time. Not all of them. Some of the physical auras do well. Some of the mental auras do well. Some of the emotional and even the spiritual ones do well. The key is if the partner of the violet aura is not an egotist themselves and they're willing and feel comfortable within the ego of the violet, the relationship can do quite well. Some mental auras who are very strong emotionally can do quite well. They can balance quite well. If not, it's a difficult relationship. It's again, here too is a hit or miss. Now, why this aura is called the king or the queen's aura? Because they have enormous, their leadership style is, is simply because their leadership style is a kind of holier than thou, autocratic, sometimes tyrannical way, which is pretty much out of step with most of today's society, but seems to be me making a comeback. Though this aura tends to harbor a lot of guilt for the, their leadership style and their way of dealing with people, they often mask that with ego. And when they do this, they sort of insensitize themselves to other people's needs and feelings. And this is where the problem comes in, right here, is when they allow ego to lead their lives too much, they can become destructive as leaders. If not, and they remember their own passion and their own needs and apply it to, in, in sort of a vicarious way to others, and they can see that others have similar needs and they're not above them, they become great leaders. However, their ego being so powerful as it is on this world at this time, they can make lots of monies, have huge businesses, uh, be great spiritual leaders, can be wonderful politicians, or they can be the worst of politicians. Basically, this aura needs to find its true purpose in life without ego, or at least having control over their own ego. If they can see this and succeed at doing that, they can be one of the best people to work for. This aura has a tendency to feel like they have a mission from God in order to achieve their goals in life. And this is where the ego comes in again into play. In a sense, that is actually sort of true. Because this particular aura has a, a great purpose and, and can have the power and the ego to motivate and create something that does well for society, it also gives this aura the holier-than-thou attitude, which is the mistake. What is okay for me is not okay for thee kind of attitude. However, when they do find their true purpose in life and not their ego's purpose in life. They can be very satisfied what they do. They can be very motivating. They can be very, very at peace with themselves and the people around them. This is the key for this aura. Now, as I said before, recently this aura is showing up in society a lot these days. And I'm seeing more on the corrupt side than on the good side. I have a couple of people I'm working with here in the country I am in right now, and they're fine. They're doing actually quite well. But I see others just abuse their ego. And the key thing to look for is that it's okay for me, but not for you kind of attitude. The holier-than-thou attitude, the misuse and abuse of power, will tell you that they no longer can be trusted because 99% of the time, once they go that far with the ego, it's over. 
At least in my experience, this is the case. However, if you see it in your child and you can nurture them away from that and realize that you can be at peace with yourselves, 